is what we currently have. And so this image on the left is what we currently have. And we're aiming something that looks a little bit more like this. And you can see there's a pretty big difference between the two of them right now with the order of everything. And I said, there's a good reason for that. So in this one, we're just going to fix the order of it. Then we're going to worry about positioning uh, things a little bit within that space. If we come down and we take a look, let's go back to our markup here and come down to our recent articles. So what we've done is created our article recent. Inside of our article recent, we have the main and we have this recent secondary. Now, this is going to be really useful when we get to the big screen sizes because we want two columns. That's the main reason I created these two separate divs is so at large screens, we can have the two columns. Right now, though, we only have one column because we're on small screens, but we need to rearrange the order of everything. So what I want to do is I want to give, let's come up. So we'll come over here to our styles and we can do our article recent with display flex we can change the order but first when i do display flex it has created two columns so i want you to go ahead now and change that back so it wouldn't be two columns i want them to stack one on top of each other so we do that with our flex direction and switch that over to a column and now we have it back pretty much exactly how we had it before but now we can play around with ordering um, and this is pretty cool so what i'm going to do is to change the order of something, we go and we do it on the child itself. So we have our article recent main, and we had the article recent secondary. And on different things within a flex, you can literally apply an order to them. So if I said order two, and I can come on this and say order one, it's going to switch the order of them. You might have even noticed that um, the order of it like sort of jumped around. So if we go and take a really quick look, you can see that it actually has changed our images on top and everything else is on the bottom. And that's awesome. That's super cool, right? Um, so why would we do this? Again, it's to be focused on keeping the markup making more sense and the logical order here as if, if there was no CSS that loaded in. So somebody could still read it in a way that makes sense as if there's no CSS. And if we want to make visual changes, we can. Uh, if, we, if we want to make visual reordering, we can because we have a hierarchy that we're following that still is drawing the eye to the right place. If the CSS were to fail, it would make a lot more sense the order that we see it in here. Now, closer to when you are, the first it's going to come. You're literally saying this should be first, this should be second, this should be third. Just for fun, if you wanted to, you could try doing what would happen if I gave it zero? Well, guess what? It means it's smaller than one, so it's it's going first. Uh, or, or then, oh, what happens if I give this a negative one? Well, that's smaller now, so it goes first. So it's the smaller your number, the earlier it is and you could have a hundred items and you could give them all in order and that would be a nightmare to control and to set up but if, if that's what floats your boat go for it um, but i'm going to stick with my two and a one if you have two things that have equal order they're going to go in the order they were originally in the markup so they're going to follow whatever they had here because they have the same value um, so if you don't apply anything now we'll switch this one back to a two um, it might even be worth putting a comment in your code just to explain why you're bothering to do this um, if you if you think it's not clear enough or if you'd be coming back later and maybe think you might be confused by something like that. This lesson is focused really on order, but I do want to just finish up a little bit on here. So the other thing I want to do is on my article recent, just add a little bit of margin bottom to them of say 2M to create that space here just so it's not sticking to the, the image of the next one that we have in there. Because if not, it doesn't look very nice. So just adding in that empty space is a good thing. And again, go with a bigger margin uh, than you might expect. We do have a layout to be basing things on uh, if you're looking back at your layout as well. The last thing while we're here, though, is you might be going, what? you know, we just added some space here. But the last thing we might you might be wondering about is this gigantic space that we're getting here. Part of it is um, we have our H2 here that has a margin top. And we have this, which we added a big margin bottom on. And that's causing some problems. Um, and you might be going, well, shouldn't those margins be collapsing? And normally they would be collapsing, but there's something weird with Flexbox and collapsing margins. They don't collapse anymore. That's only for the direct children. Um, so I'm not going to get too much into that. We're definitely going to run into more situations with it. But we need the fix for this, for, the, for this little uh, time frame anyway, is the fix which we need to do on our site at large anyway. So I'm just going to scroll all the way up to my h1 h2 h3 here and say that it should have a margin top of zero because we're going to run into other issues with that if not anyway so if we go and take a look that just sort of sucks everything up a little bit closer 
and looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to explore how you could potentially get that to be even closer uh, when we look at the media query in the next one where we're going to pull this over to the right side and suck that up even more. That's an exploration video more than a best practice video, but we'll see that 